Hello, ghouls, and welcome to Brave the Basement. I'm your host, Ghoul the Rules. I'm your co-host, Black One Jack 2. If you enjoy getting a little scared, ghost stories, haunted houses, a believer in the supernatural, or maybe even a skeptic wanting to look at things from a different perspective, then this is the show for you. Today's episode is sponsored by Ed's Barbershop. Ed's Barbershop is located at 210 Lane Street, North Judson, Indiana. So if you enjoy getting your hair cut from hometown barber with that old-fashioned feel, then dial 574-896-3344 and schedule your appointment today. Hey, Blackjack, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing pretty good, and I'm just excited. What are we doing today? Is it another witch? If it is the famous Salem Witch, witch trials. trials. So we have another witch-related topic for you guys today. Yeah, and so before we get into all that... Uh, I got two announcements to make. Um, Contest announcement. Hear ye, hear ye, brave the basement ghouls. Last season we did a one-off episode about Bell Gunnis. This season we'll be covering another serial killer. Hidden somewhere in the website is a clue about who that serial killer is. If you are the first listener to email us who the killer is and the details about where and what the clue was, you will get to pick the topic for season two. Episode 20, Season Closer. So go ahead and jump on over to bravethebasement.weebly.com. I will give you one more hint. It is not on the news page. So go ahead and click around those pages and see if you can find it. Uh, The next announcement, I recently... So there's a YouTube channel uh, called The Art of Guitar. And... uh, fantastic guitar player and uh he created the four note challenge and as i mentioned before i am a heavy metal guitarist and i seen the video and i said i'm gonna do the four note challenge so uh just recently i did the four note challenge and what the four note challenge is he provides a backing track and you can only play on the third and fourth string of the seventh and ninth fret of your guitar and you got to create just over a minute solo based around just those four notes. You are allowed to do bends. You're allowed to use effects and all that. And so if you would like to check out what I did, head on over to the bonus material page. I posted it there. Uh, the ghoul that rules did the four note challenge. And now uh, jumping over to the Salem witch trials. The infamous Salem witch trials began during the spring of 1692 after a group of young girls in Salem, Massachusetts claimed to be possessed by the devil and accused several local women of witchcraft. As a wave of hysteria spread throughout colonial Massachusetts, a special court convened in Salem to hear the cases. The first convicted witch, Bridget Bishop, was hanged that June. Eighteen others followed Bishop to Salem's Gallows Hill, while some 150 more men, women, and children were accused over the next several months. By September 1692, the hysteria had begun to abate and public opinion turned against the trials. Though the Massachusetts General Court later annulled guilty verdicts against accused witches and granted indemnities to their families, bitterness lingered in the community, and the painful legacy of the Salem witch trials would endure for centuries. Belief in the supernatural, and specifically in the devil's practice of giving certain humans the power to harm others in return for their loyalty, had emerged in Europe as early as the 14th century, and was widespread in colonial New England. In addition, the harsh realities of life in a rural Puritan community of Salem Village, which is now present-day Danvers, Massachusetts, at the time included the after-effects of a British war with France in American colonies in 1689. A recent smallpox epidemic, fear of attacks from neighboring Native American tribes, and a long-standing rivalry with more affluent community of Salem Town, which is present-day Salem. Amid these simmering tensions, the Salem Witch Trials would be fueled by resident suspicions of and resentment towards their neighbors, as well as their fear of outsiders. In January 1692, 9-year-old Elizabeth Paris and 11-year-old Abigail Williams began having fits, including violent contortions and uncontrollable outbursts of screaming. After a local doctor, William Griggs, diagnosed bewitchment, other young girls in the community began to exhibit similar symptoms, including Ann Putnam, Mercy Lewis, Elizabeth Hubbard, 
Mary Walcott, and Mary Warren. In late February, arrest warrants were issued for the Paris' Caribbean slave, Tituba, along with two other women, the homeless beggar Sarah Good and the poor elderly Sarah, Sarah Osborne, whom the girls accused of bewitching them. The three accused witches were brought before the magistrate, Jonathan Corwin and John Hathorne, and questioned. Even as their accusers appeared in the courtroom in a grand display of spasms, contortions, screaming, and writhing, Though Good and Osborne denied their guilt, Tatuba confessed, likely seeking to save herself from certain conviction by acting as an informer. She claimed there were other witches acting alongside her in service of the devil against the Puritans. As hysteria spread throughout the community and beyond into the rest of Massachusetts, a number of others were accused, including Martha Corey, Rebecca Nurse, both regarded as upstanding members of church and community, and the four-year-old daughter of Sarah Good. Like the tuba, several accused witches confessed and named still others, and a trial soon began to overwhelm the local justice system. In May 1692, the newly appointed governor of Massachusetts, William Phipps, ordered the establishment of a special court of Oyer and term Terminer. So what that means is to hear and to decide on witches, causes of uh, Suffolk, Essex, and Middlesex counties. Presided over by judges, judges included Hathorne, Samuel Seawall, and William Stoughton, the court handed down its first conviction against Bridget Bishop on June 2nd. She was hanged eight days later on what would become known as Gallows Hill in Salem Town. Five more people were hanged that July, five in August, and eight more in September. In addition, seven other accused witches died in jail, while the elderly Giles Corey was pressed to death by stones after he refused to enter a plea at his arraignment. Though the respected minister Cotton Mather was warned of the dubious value of spectral evidence, his concerns went largely unheeded during the Salem witch trials. Increase Mather, president of Harvard College, later joined his son in urging that the standards of evidence for witchcraft must be equal to those for any other crime, concluding that it would be better that ten suspected witches may escape than one innocent person be condemned. Amid warning, public support for the trials, Governor Phipps dissolved the court of lawyer and terminer in October and mandated that its successor disregard spectral evidence. Trials continued with dwindling intensity until early 1693, and by that May Phipps had pardoned and released all those in prison on witchcraft charges. In January 1697, the Massachusetts General Court declared a day of fasting for the tragedy of the Salem Witch Trials. The court later deemed the trials unlawful, and the leading justice Samuel Sewall publicly ap apologized for his role in the process. The damage to the community lingered, however, even after Massachusetts Colony passed legislation restoring the good names of the condemned and providing financial restitution to their heirs in 1711. Indeed, the vivid and painful legacy of the Salem Witch Trials endured well into the 20th century, when Arthur Miller dramatized the events in his play, The Crucible, using them as an allegory for the anti-communist witch hunts led by Senator Joseph McCarthy in the 1950s. Okay, I, I, I was thinking about this over uh, the whole story, uh, uh, over this whole thing, is that I love how there's so much history, and we're going back, even went back to the 14th century uh, in London, no, not in London, in the New England, right? Yeah, so what's... What I find interesting about this is nowadays everyone just thinks that, you know, these people were just absolutely crazy and the whole trials were just, you know, a kangaroo court and, you know, these people weren't guilty of anything. But when you dive into this thing and you, you start looking at it, uh, one of the things that bothered me about the story is that they said that people were doing contortions. 
they were contorting their body and they were just acting crazy. And that's what kind of started the whole thing. And then uh, when they were brought before a judge, even though that they're facing execution, started to do the exact same thing right there in the courtroom. And then they started accusing other people. Now, uh, scientists believe that they have found um, scientific evidence as to why these people would have done something like this. Um, an effort to explain by scientific means the strange afflictions suffered by those bewitched Salem residents in 1692. A study published in Science Magazine in 1976 cited the fungus ergot found in rye, wheat, and other cereals, which, which toxicologists say can cause symptoms such as delusions, vomiting, and muscle spasms. So you're saying because of their food source, it was toxic, making these doing all these uh, crazy things. Crazy things. Yeah, so, well, that's that's the that's I believe that is the official uh, narrative now that uh, modern scientists is trying to use to explain exactly what happened here. Um, Maybe I, the whole town was infected, making well, them seeing crazy stuff, and then the actual effect. So another thing was uh, because, you know, if you were accused of being a witch, um, then you started accusing other people of, of uh, being a witch. And a lot of people believed that this was just a uh, local government um, land grab, trying to just take land from people. And that was one way of getting the property was to just accuse somebody of being a witch. Lo and behold, you're arrested more than likely tried and convicted, and your land is taken So, you. So it's like this. Ghoul, you're a witch. You're arrested. I have your land. Basically, yeah, it's kind of what uh, a lot of the conspiracy theorists are, are throwing out there. This was a big, giant land grab. Where I have some conflictions about this whole thing, like I said, is during the trial, the people were were acting just absolutely crazy uh, even though they were facing execution so could that be explained by you know the tainted food or was there really something going on and because that modern day just doesn't believe really in witches and witchcraft have tried to find a different explanation as to why these people were doing this obviously not all of them were witches I'm gonna say that now no no it was it was just they were probably all freaked out at the time. Sure. I mean, you know, people were. Free I mean, wouldn't you be freaked out? Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, uh, when you have people doing weird stuff. And that's the thing. So was whatever was going on in the beginning. I believe, and I've always felt this way about the Salem Witch Trials, that there was somebody somewhere involved in witchcraft. And I'm not saying that the whole town and because because it got the whole thing got out of hand and it got crazy right from the get go. I mean, as soon as the whole thing even started, it, it blew way out of proportion. Um, but I always thought and I just, you know, my personal opinion that there was at least one person trying to do some witchcraft. I think so. I think and I think there I'm, was a little touch of something going on. I feel like this is how it happened. So. This person did the witchcraft. Someone saw the uh, person, but to save their hind, they blamed it on someone else, and it just it's a blame game. Yeah, and it just the finger pointed started. Um, it was a really good way. Uh, if I had problems with a neighbor, uh, you know, for whatever the reason may be, I could just say, "Hey, I think that person's a witch. I see them doing some crazy things too, and now they're arrested. Now that neighbor's no longer a problem to me." And uh, I. But the problem with that theory, Blackjack, is, you know, you're then you would be assuming that everybody here was bad people, right? You're so, assuming that everyone else is a witch. Yeah, but if if I do that to my neighbor, after I see people legit being executed for being a quote unquote witch, and you're still making accusations against your neighbor. You're a horrible person. You are right? a very horrible person. And the roles are reversed. Someone can do it to you. 
True, exactly. Everyone would be against each other. So if I do it to you, what's not to say that, you know, you a cousin yeah. of yours is going to do it to me to get back at me uh, for what I did to you? Or maybe that was what was going on, right? And, you know, if you think about the food, if you think about it, if yeah. you think about it, let's just add that food poisoning. What is it? Uh, what, what are all the, uh, the, the, the side effects? I'm going to call them the side effects. Delusion? Uh, the contortion and what well, else? Well, muscle spasms. Muscle uh, spasms. Contu- uh, let me let me look that up. Let's Blackjack. look that up because I I have a theory. All right. Uh, going back to my notes here, Blackjack. Uh, toxicologists say uh that it can cause symptoms such as delusions. We we said contusions. I accidentally. Uh, delusions, vomiting, and muscle spasms was the three uh okay. symptoms listed here. So back to the blame game. If everyone has this toxin, they're going to have this delusion and it's going to it's going to fuel the fire. So with the blaming game, I saw you do something. Plus the delusion is going to make it really real and then this finger and and, and this finger pointing game is just going to be off the charts. So you think if if most of the population of the the village were suffering from delusions that that caused some of the mass hysteria. And then there were some people who were unfortunate and got to like the next stage and the next level with the muscle spasms. And and that made the, the scary looking uh, body contortions. And, you know, kind of when, when you get into uh, some of these more modern day horror movies uh, where, where these, these ghosts or whatever, they do these weird uh, body contortions and, even you know, even an older movie, kind of like The Exorcism, where you know the head spins all the way around, and I'm not saying that that's what they were doing, obviously, <laughs> no. but uh, you know, just trying trying to put a visual to this. But that still begs the question: Was there any witchcraft whatsoever involved in the Salem witch trials that prompted this whole thing? Was it toxins in the food? I think it's all of it. Was it a conspiracy theory land grab by high elite people within the village who band together and decided to take out enemies and grab land at the same time? I I don't think about the third one. Uh, you would have to go really deep into the the the, uh, the subject there, uh, and I'm pretty sure there there could be a a way to figure out who's owned land in, during this time. Well, sure. This is extremely well documented. Um, you know, this is another one of those topics, Blackjack, that, you know, you could, there's entire podcasts and movies and documentaries and it just goes on and on and on and on. And obviously we're, we're not going to hit every detail in a 20 minute episode that Brave the Basement usually is. So before we get out of here, I just want to remind everybody, uh, head on over to bravethebasement.weebly.com. See if you can find that clue for the serial killer and email us who the serial killer is, where you got the information, what the clue was, and you could pick the paranormal topic. It could be any topic that you want. If you want to talk about aliens, the Bigfoot, to whatever you you, you would love to hear us talk about, um, anything that would make Blackjack say, if you think about it. If you think. And that was the first time I've said that in a long time. And has been a long time since you said that. Uh, also, don't forget, um, I did the four-note challenge. Uh, head on over to bravethebasement.weebly.com. Go to the bonus material page. There's a video there. Um, I didn't want to aggravate our listeners and have to sit and listen to me play guitar. This is not a guitar podcast. This is no. a paranormal podcast. But I, I thought mean, it'd be fun to I throw mean, in the if, bonus material. I mean, material. we could... Find a haunted guitar. Find it a haunted guitar. I, I, I honestly, if we can figure something like that. I've seen a guitar uh, made out of real bones. So, bonus a material. person's bones. Bonus material? What's that? Uh, like a couple minute, five minute bonus material episode about this guitar. About the bones guitar? Yeah, I'd do a five minute, like maybe five to ten minutes. I'd have to find a, I, th- I think the video is on YouTube. Um, I don't, I don't remember if the guy talks about the guitar or whatever, but some people claim that it was a hoax that, you know, it really wasn't the bone. It was supposed to be like his 
grandfather's bones or something and a dude built a guitar out of, which was a cool idea well, if you're a metal cool. guy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But um, I wouldn't use my grandfather's bones for a guitar, you know. So other than that, so head on over to the uh, website, check out that bonus material. You'll hear me rock a four-note no- four solo. Bins were allowed. Yes, I know those who, who know guitars and music. Well, when you bend the note, it becomes another note. So aren't you using more than four notes? Hey, I'm just following the rules here, okay? So if you'd like to become a Brave the Basement ghoul, be sure to share the show on social media. Go to bravethebasement.weebly.com and sign up for our newsletter to get all the latest news and updates when each episode has been posted. If you have a ghost story you would like to share with us, you can reach us at bravethebasement at gmail.com. Your story can make it on the show and be featured on the website. You can also submit your story on Reddit under the subreddit Brave the Basement or in the YouTube comment section. If you have an eerie ghost photo you would like to share, please email us and include a description and your photo could be added to our photo gallery. And that brings us to the end. We hope that we brought you just a little fright. And remember when you're up late at night and you hear something in the other room that just doesn't seem right. It's okay if you need to turn on the light to protect yourself from things that go bump in the night. I'm your host, Google the Rules. I'm your co-host, Black One Jack 2. And I hope you join us again. Until next time.